Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for the Guts Editor. Uh, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Dungeon Editor as well as creating a custom dungeon uh, that will be accessible in the game and will be randomly generated from pieces that already exist in the game. So this is going to just be a introductory look at the Dungeon Editor. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is navigate to our settings file and I'll put the file path up on the screen. Once you're there, you want to open that file up and this is what we're looking for here, console. We want to set this, right now it's on zero which means it's turned off, we want to turn it on so we set it to one. This will let us access the console in game. I'm also going to turn on debug menus because it sounds like um, well, it just sounds useful, so I'm going to turn it on, and I will save the settings file, and then close it, and open Guts up. Okay, here's our uh, last mod from our last video. I'm going to make a new one. Do my, I'm going to call it my first dungeon, and hit OK. There's our new directory for our new mod and load up guts. Now the first thing we're going to want to do here is go into our data editors and go to the dungeon editor. Now there's a lot of stuff here. Um, try not to be intimidated. We'll get through um, all of this eventually. We're not going to do it all in this one video, but um, right now we're just going to change some stuff around so that we can see some results when we go into the game. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to clone a dungeon. So I'm going to select Ancient Vaults here. This is a data file for the Ancient Vaults dungeon. And I'm going to right click and clone it. And it's going to ask us for a file name for convention. I'm just going to call it the same thing as my mod. So my first dungeon. Here's the file path. It's in our mod directory. Make sure the clone box is checked and you're cloning the right dungeon file and there's our new dungeon file right here alright now we need to change some, val change some values because we don't want an exact copy we want to make this our own um, now generally speaking uh, this dungeon file is a set of uh, data attributes that we're gonna save that tell the game well this is what our dungeon is um, and we have an all-encompassing set of data that is for the whole dungeon but then inside of that we have this these subsets of data called the stratum and we have different stratas that allow us to define different rules for different areas of the dungeon and I'll talk about that more in a minute but for right now we're gonna change some of the global values for this dungeon now this name here uh, I'm going to call this my first dungeon again. This is the name that the game is going to use. Um, when we access it in the console, this is the name of the dungeon we'll type in to access our dungeon. The next name is the name that the user sees when they're playing, the display name. So we're going to make this user friendly and put some spaces in. So my first dungeon. This will display when they enter the dungeon, it'll show up on top of the map, uh, etc. Now we have parent dungeon, parent town. This is where you're going to end up when you leave the dungeon. Parent dungeon uh, will port you um, when you exit using a standard exit inside of the dungeon. Like if you use the stairs or get to the end of the dungeon and use the portal at the exit. So this is where you pop out when you do that. You have a lot of options. I'm just going to leave it as salt barons. And then the parent town, this is where you end up if you use a scroll or if you die and then use the resurrect in town option, you end up in your parent town. I'm going to leave this as Zarefesh, but as you see, there's also a ton of options for this as well. Now, player level match range. You want to be careful when you set this because you don't want a level 10 character stumbling into a level 40 dungeon by accident. Um, that would just be cruel. 
So you want to set this, you want to be uh, aware of the level range of the area where your dungeon is going to be, and you're going to want to match that or be close to that. I'm going to actually set this to 1 because I'm going to be testing this with a level 1 brand new character. Um, back to the strata here. <coughs> Typically, your strata 0 is going to be your main floors, and your strata 1 is going to be like a boss room. And you can see that here in our rule set, if we s switch to strata 1, some of the stuff changes in here. Our rule set here changes to mini boss room. So that's typically what what's going to be going on with Strata. Um, right now, <coughs> um, the only thing I'm going to change is the champion spawn class and the monster spawn class. And this is basically just going to tell the dungeon um, what monsters I want to spawn uh, in my dungeon. So for my champion class, see there's a lot of options for this as well. These are all the monster classes, spawn classes. Um, I'm going to choose zombie, just so we can tell that we're obviously controlling the spawn classes here. So, And then in monster spawn, I'm going to select zombies, plural. So my regular monsters are going to be zombies, and my champion monsters are going to be zombie. Now, you can randomize this with this button, or you can uh, define hard count which basically says two to two so it's just saying I want you to make two champion spawns in my dungeon so two champions will spawn in my dungeon the other option is per meter and this defines the density of monsters that spawn um, per meter in the dungeon okay so that's all we're gonna change in here for now we'll get back to some more of this stuff in later videos, but there's way too much to go over in just this one video. So go ahead and save your dungeon file. Make sure you save it. Definitely don't want to not save that. And then exit.